This is the all new Epix, but it's not an Epix. It's actually the new Garmin Phoenix 8. And if that sounds confusing, well, it's because it is, or, or at least it was. Let me explain. You see, Garmin has been making the Phoenix for a very long time. The first one came out in 2012, same year that the Avengers movie came out, the same year that Michael Phelps broke the world record for the most medals won in the Olympics. And the Phoenix was a very popular watch. It was Garmin's top of the line, rugged, do everything watch, and people loved it. Now Garmin skipped the Phoenix 4, but it has made a ton of additions and iterations of the Garmin Phoenix over the past dozen years or so. But recently, there's been a bit of a problem. When Garmin made the Phoenix 7 in 2022, they also released the Garmin Epix with a bright AMOLED touchscreen display, and it was obvious that people actually preferred that AMOLED display as opposed to the MIP-style display or memory and pixel display that was on the Phoenix. And what's really wild here is people would say stuff like, the Epix is nice, but I wish Garmin made the Phoenix with the same AMOLED screen which is exactly what Garmin had been doing all along. The Epix was the Phoenix with an AMOLED screen. So to correct all of this confusion, Garmin kind of had to make a choice. The Epix name or the Phoenix name. And the Phoenix name was the obvious choice just because of all of the history and its overall popularity over the past 12 years. So here we are with the Garmin Phoenix 8, which now has a very bright AMOLED touchscreen display. But if these AMOLED displays really aren't your thing, good news. There's also a memory and pixel or MIP style display with solar charging, which basically doubles the battery life of the device. Uh, but either way, they'll both have the fifth generation Elevate heart rate sensor. They're both gonna have this new sensor guard. They're both gonna have built-in speakers, microphones, so we can control our watch with our voices or connect to smartphone voice assistants. There's also new navigation features on the Phoenix 8, new sports specific workouts, and that same built-in flashlight that you guys know that I love and I've talked about on this channel a ton of times. Trust me, uh, it, you guys don't even realize just how amazing it is to always have a flashlight built into something that's on your wrist. Um, I use it, I use it every day. And these come in a variety of different colors and sizes uh, and a variety of different prices actually. Prices ranging from $800 to $1,200. So there's some more affordable options, uh, but basically you can think of it like this. Um, the prices have for the most part gone up $100 when you compare comparable devices. And I actually think that there ends up being something like 15 different versions of the new Phoenix that you can actually choose from. So if you're thinking about picking one of these up, I'm gonna try to make all of these different variations clear. So throughout this video, I'll be showing the Phoenix 8 in the 43 millimeter edition. So this is the smaller edition. It's actually one millimeter bigger than the previous version of their small Phoenix. Garmin used to call it the Phoenix 7S, or I guess it could have been the Phoenix 7S Pro. Uh, but this is the silver color, which cost $1,000. It's stainless steel. Uh, but these watches also come in a black titanium variety uh, with a sapphire lens. Garmin calls that color their, their carbon gray diamond-like coated titanium with a black pebble gray watch band. And then there's actually a soft gold edition in this size with a fog gray silicone watch band and that has a sapphire lens as well. Uh, basically it's $100 more for the sapphire editions or in this case it's $1,100. And the prices are the same for the 47 millimeter edition of the Phoenix 8. There's a slate gray and black stainless steel edition for $1,000. And then there's a few sapphire editions for $1,100. Those are the uh, carbon gray diamond light coated titanium with a black band. And then this uh, spark orange color, which I think is actually pretty cool might be the color that I would pick if I were if I were choosing an option. I don't know, maybe it's too bright, what do you guys think? 
Uh, but the 47 millimeter editions also come in a solar sapphire edition. So you have this cool uh, amp yellow color and then the standard go-to uh, carbon gray diamond light coated titanium with a black band. And those are $1,100. And then the price goes up another $100 for the 51 millimeter editions of these watches. And you can have the slate gray with stainless steel at $1,100. And similar to the 47 millimeter options, the 51 sapphire titanium editions come in spark orange or carbon gray diamond light coated with black bands. And again, still similar to the 47 millimeter editions, this larger 51 millimeter edition also has a solar option in here uh, with the same two colors, amp yellow and carbon gray. And those cost $1,200. Now Garmin is also announcing the Garmin Enduro 3 today, which is uh, very similar to a Phoenix in a lot of ways, um, but it's a, it's a 51 millimeter edition, um, not necessarily as many smart features. It doesn't have a microphone, it doesn't have a speaker, for example, uh, but it's designed for extreme battery life. And it's a fairly lightweight device as well. I actually have a full video review of that if you guys wanna check that out, I'll link it up here in the top left corner. Uh, but if you guys are still keeping count, again, not including the Enduro 3, uh, that's 13 editions of the Phoenix. Well, in an odd move here, Garmin is also releasing something that they're calling their Phoenix E watch. Maybe the E stands for uh, economical, um, I, I don't actually know, uh, but it still costs $800. Uh, and before you get super excited about this edition of the Phoenix, uh, it only comes in one size, and that's a 47 millimeter edition. Uh, you only have two color choices, so that's a slate gray stainless steel and just the plain stainless steel. Uh, both of those come with black bands, and this watch doesn't come with all of these new features of the Phoenix 8 that we're gonna talk about. And it also has the older heart rate sensor, and it also has less memory. It's 16 gigs instead of 32 gigs on the Phoenix 8. Eight. So no speaker, no microphone, no solar options, no sapphire options, uh, and it doesn't even have my beloved flashlight that you guys know that I kind of rave about all the time. Now keeping in mind that I don't actually have this device in hand, uh, to me, you know, I definitely think just looking at the spec sheet, it really does feel like this watch is going to be super similar to the previous edition of the Garmin Epix. And not the Garmin Epix Pro, but the, the previous, previous Epix. They called it like the Garmin Epix Gen 2 edition. Now, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, I actually really love that watch, but it's, it's pretty old at this point. And you can actually snag one on sale if you look around for um, quite a big discount. I'm actually seeing them on sale currently for like 530 bucks, which is a great deal if that's something that you wanna consider. And yes, uh, I will leave links to where you can buy any of these items in the description of this video or pin a comment to the top. Uh, but I'll also ask my friends over at the Dial Cycling Lab if you guys can use my discount code, uh, even on the new stuff, which actually might be pretty cool, might be able to save you guys a little bit of money at least. Uh, but as you are deciding on your next watch and what size you're gonna pick out, uh, definitely keep in mind that the size and the screen technology is gonna play a large role in how much battery life you can expect from these watches. Uh, AMOLED definitely kills batteries. Uh, AMOLED displays with the settings set to always on instead of raised to wake definitely kills batteries. Uh, and then larger watches just actually have more space for larger batteries. Um, here, I actually tried to make a chart that would try to help explain some of this stuff a little bit more clearly. And what's cool here, uh, Garmin is actually using slightly new and improved solar tech in their, they call it their Power Sapphire memory and pixel displays on the Phoenix. So if battery life is important to you, the solar additions might be the way to go here. And like previous versions of the Garmin Phoenix, the Phoenix 8 has that dual band GPS chip, so it can connect to multiple types of satellite systems and even multiple frequencies of those satellite systems at the same time, just to provide you with the most accurate GPS possible. But the GPS mode that you choose is gonna affect battery life. GPS in general is, is hard on battery life, and you can actually expect about 15% or so less battery life if you are using these Phoenix watches in their most accurate possible setting. Garmin actually has a really cool mode that they call SAT IQ, 
if you're looking for it in the settings, it just says like auto, but by default, that's the mode that the watch is gonna be set in. And that's the one that I'm gonna recommend for you guys, unless you really think that you're gonna push the battery life to its absolute max. But this mode is gonna automatically switch between GPS modes. So depending on the quality of your GPS signal, you're gonna end up kind of getting the best of both worlds. And as I've been testing the GPS accuracy of this watch, you know, I've seen like zero issues. Uh, in this example, I'm showing the Garmin Enduro 2, the Garmin Enduro 3, and the Garmin Phoenix 8 here. And they all seem to be tracking extremely tightly. You can even see where I stopped to pick blackberries here with my nine-year-old kid. Uh, the, the accuracy on these watches is just fantastic. Now, I also found the heart rate accuracy to be pretty solid as well. Uh, this uses Garmin's latest and greatest heart rate sensor. It's the fifth generation of what Garmin calls their Elevate optical heart rate sensor. Uh, and this sensor has all of the needed hardware that allows the watch to perform an ECG test. Uh, ECG tests, uh, for the most part, is mostly looking for signs of AFib. Um, and that feature is actually somewhat dependent upon what country you're in. Um, I'll leave links to Garmin's page about what countries are available, uh, but that'll basically depend on if it's cleared by your own country's version of the FDA or the health authority system in your particular region. Now, if we look closely at this new Phoenix 8, we will see a new metal reinforced sensor guard between the selection button and the back button. Very similar to what the Garmin Descent Mark III has. Uh, and with this new Garmin 8, Garmin has redesigned the buttons a little bit just to be a little bit more resistant to leaks. So now the new Phoenix 8 has a water resistance rating of 100 meters, but a dive rating of 40 meters, meaning that those of you guys who like to do recreational level dives should be good to go with this device. And Garmin has actually brought over its scuba dive activity tracker. So that's actually really cool to see here. Uh, and I, I don't actually know if this is gonna fully replace your dive computer, but that probably depends on how much of a recreational diver you are uh, and how deep you actually go. Part of me actually wonders if this is, you know, just like a, a subtle response to uh, Apple's Apple Watch Ultra and its dive capabilities. Uh, but there's also a new plan dive activity type in here, which I'm not super familiar with, uh, but to me it looks like you can actually calculate your uh, no decompression limit zone uh, and a few other metrics in here, uh, like how much gas you have allotted. Uh, but I actually think that people are gonna be pretty excited about this feature on their Garmin Phoenix. But even more popular than the new dive features, Garmin added a microphone and a speaker to this Phoenix 8. And I don't actually expect that I'll use it a ton, uh, but you can answer calls on your watch. Uh, you can also connect to your smartphone's assistant text and ask Rainmaker. it to send text messages or really anything video. that the, the voice assistant can do. And by default, Garmin currently has it set up to where if you hold down the start key, it'll pull up that listening screen and you can begin talking to it and prompting it to do start things. Start a run. And even if you're not connected to your smartphone, the Phoenix 8 has a few features that you can do directly on the watch. Uh, I imagine that um, setting a timer, for example, is gonna be one of the most common things that people are gonna do here. But you can also start an activity with your voice as well. But even besides the whole microphone and speaker addition to the Phoenix 8, there's still a ton more going on here. Uh, for example, uh, you can use Garmin's Messenger application with this device. So uh, if someone does have that application on their smartphone, they can actually send you a message directly to your watch. There's also something new here called Garmin Share, which is, it's kind of like um, Apple's AirDrop if you guys have ever used that, uh, but it's a Bluetooth to Bluetooth connection, in this case from watch to watch, and you can send stuff like routes or courses or uh, saved locations and workouts and stuff like that. You can send it directly to your buddies, just watch to watch right before you head out for a run. There's also new strength training workouts here, uh, and then there's a new feature called Dynamic Round Tripping, which lets you enter how far that you want to go and then you can actually change stuff on the fly directly on the watch and your watch is just going to figure it all out. There's of course uh, Garmin Music on this device so you can leave your phone at home and you can listen to music directly on the device with connected Bluetooth headphones. Uh, you can listen to music from providers like Spotify or Deezer. 
Uh, there's also Garmin Pay, so you can leave your wallet at home. Uh, you can pay for items with its uh, NFC or near field communication uh, protocol. It's similar to Apple Pay or uh, Google Pay, uh, but right from your Garmin watch, which is cool. Um, there's also live tracking so that friends or spouses or family can track where you are in real time while you're out running or biking or doing whatever. Uh, there's also crash detection on this device, so it can automatically send a message to whoever you have set up as far as emergencies go. Uh, all of the best stuff that Garmin can do it's all on here. It's all on the Garmin Phoenix 8. Uh, but overall, uh, I actually think that this is a very solid update from Garmin. You know, I don't love the, the bump in price, um, but I do imagine that, you know, some of these features are going to be compelling enough for at least some of you guys to consider upgrading devices. Uh, let me know, actually. Uh, is this something that you would consider buying? Which version of the Phoenix 8 do you think is best? I think, I think personally, I think I'd be tempted to get the big old 51 millimeter AMOLED edition just because of the extra battery life. But I don't know. Um, also, while you guys are down in the comment section, let me know if you guys would like to see a more in-depth review of the Phoenix 8 after I've been using it for a bit longer. Like uh, I tend to do like these 100 day reviews. Uh, maybe I can talk a little bit more as to which of these new features is really valuable to me personally and which one of these features aren't really worth worrying about. Uh, but either way, fancy new GPS watch or no watch at all, uh, I really do hope that you're getting out there swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys in the next one.